All right, well, we are in chapter 13. And let's do a quick review over what we went over last week. We started, had a review of chapter 11. Let me do this. I've got some people that are in the waiting room. We're going to get them in. Admit, there's no one going to admit. Okay. All right. The review of chapter 12. It was an appeal to consecration. We dealt with that in verses 1 and 2. Um, we were, uh, uh, the, the appeal was to present your bodies as living sacrifices. Sacrifices are what was given uh, in order to uh, make a connection with God. And the sacrifice was actually a, a animal that was uh, put to death and then sacrificed. But he's asking us to be let our bodies be living sacrifices. We are only put to death to sin. So if we sacrifice ourselves as we live, we're giving up our will to the will of God and everything else that would come in between what God would want of us. Uh, we do this in view of the mercies of God. Uh, which is your reasonable or your spiritual service. We are to be of service to God. And it is, it, it's, it's, I've never known God to have us do something that is unreasonable. Uh, anything God wants you to do or anything God puts a task for you or he gives you some instructions and things for you to do, it's always something that you can do. It's not out of your uh, ability. He knows us from, the very beginning. And he knows what we are able to do and what we are, are not able to do. And he will not uh, give you things that he does not believe you could do. So our reasonable service to God is going to be things that we know God wants of us and that we can do for him. One of the greatest things is to trust him and have faith in him. Uh, be transformed and not conformed to the world. We talked a lot about this last week because, you know, the world has a way of doing things and we are not to uh, transform ourselves to or conform to what the world's standards, we conform to God's standards, what the God's word tells us, uh, the, the, the direction and the guidance that he gives us. Some things are totally different from the way the world has us do it. You know, the world will become angry, will become uh, uh, discontented uh, in going through problems and trials and tribulations, but we are to go through them. Uh, the Bible says that we glory in them, or we uh, 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 know that they have a purpose for our lives, so therefore we don't act like the world does and go walk around with our head hung down and looking all sad and worried and troubled. No, we have a different way of doing things than the world does. And it's all done because of God's goodness and his word that teaches us how to go forward and do that. Yeah, uh, the Church of England blessing same-sex marriages. They've been uh, bending more to the world uh, and they have been. That is that is so true. Um, um, it's not just the Church of England. Uh, we've got many churches you know, in America who are ordaining uh, uh, gay and lesbians as pastors. And there are pastors that they may not be gay or lesbian, but they are accepting that as now a part of their canon in their churches. And I think that that is one of the, I don't understand how you can do that and read God's word and not see that it is an abomination to God. But this is how the world does. And we are not to conform to the way the world does. We do this by the renewing of our minds and to prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, serve God as members of one body. Uh, when we do this with humility, there is no one who is better than anyone else. There's no one that should be higher than someone else. 
Uh, we do what we do uh, under the the whole idea and the whole purpose of knowing that God is the one in charge of everything. And we are no better than anyone else. We just, uh, in these last few uh, lessons, have learned that God's chosen people, the children of Israel, are still his chosen people. And because we now have salvation, it was given to us as a means to cause the children of Israel to be jealous so that they could turn themselves back to God. Now, many of them haven't done that. But then again, God did not take away salvation from us because it didn't work for every last one of them. No, we now have also the same rights and the same uh, uh, promises that they have, but we cannot act as though we're better than they are because now we're saved. No, we are what they call the broken branches. And we've just been grafted in. We're just a part. We've been adopted. We may not come from the the bloodline of the children of Israel, the seven, you know, the twelve tribes, but we now have the blood of Christ that has made us uh, uh, co-heirs. It gives us what we need, but we need to do it with humility, in all seriousness, and for what. We are, we know it comes from God. We didn't do this ourselves. Everything we have, everything we've ever been, everything we ever will be is because God said it. And with appreciation for diversity, members do not have the same functions. Now, you can look at your body, all of our bodies, and there's no one part of the body that is is uh, the same as everything else. You got a right hand and a left hand. You got a right eye and a left eye. You know they they and they're not all the same. They're different sizes. They're you know it's just it's just it's amazing how God has put us together, but still each part has its own function. But we all are one and we're members of one another. So we need each other. We need every member of the body in order for us to become one with one another and one with God. We do this with zeal, no matter what our gifts are. It doesn't matter uh, because one can, 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 can teach and one can sing and one can dance and one can give. You know, it, it whatever you do, you do it with the zeal of knowing that this is what you do and you do it for God. You do it because of Christ. You do it with the zeal of the Holy Spirit that's within you. Not because of you. It's your gift. I've always said, and I'm a firm believer, you're born with these gifts. It's not something that you just obtain. These gifts are yours from your birth. Now, God uses them in his way. And he wants you to use those gifts for his glory. A person that I know many people that 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 born they're they're singers. My God, they could sing, 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 and they didn't have to go through uh, 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 training or you know uh, uh, so many different avenues and areas to improve their voices. They could just sing. It's part of their giftings. Now you can choose to use it for the world, or you can use it for God. But that gifting is there from your DNA. It's within you. And that's my opinion. And I believe that. So we have to learn how to understand that our gifts are to be used for God. And we do it with zeal. And then we dealt with conduct becoming transformation uh, in general. Uh, concerning love, good, and evil. Loving and honoring our brethren. Uh, irregardless to what you may think of someone, irregardless to uh, how you feel, uh, what someone has done, we don't do things the way the world does and retaliate because of what someone may have said or done. We're to love our enemies and we're to 
honor. And that honor means that we, we show them the best we have, not just what we want to give. We have to be fervent in our service, meaning we have to pay close attention. And we do it with, you know, the, the, the purpose of serving God and blessing God. And that fervency is what gives us that zeal and that power in order to go forward and to be strong and courageous and do the things that we should do. Uh, rejoicing, patient, and prayerful. Uh, we have to always be prayerful. We have to be patient with others. Everyone doesn't do the same thing. Everyone doesn't meet uh, at the same place at the same time. Uh, we have to uh, know that we help each other, but we don't try to run ahead or we try to be over. We just want to make sure that what we do will bring a blessing, that we pray for one another. And that we're happy. Uh, we have to rejoice. We have to show uh, the love of Christ. It's the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. Uh, caring for saints and others. Uh, we have to care for one another. Uh, that's why uh, uh, we, we've had today. Uh, started out really, you know, yesterday with Greg. You know, sending us for prayer requests. We use that, that our, our page so much for our prayer requests. And we, we, we do. When we send out a prayer request, we, we need to stop right then and there and say a prayer. Then you have to have no long, drawn-out prayer, but throw up some words. You know, make sure that you're, you're, you're there, that, that, that you're caring for those requests that come our way. Whether it's somebody in our church or someone who's been recommended to someone in our church. We don't pick and choose who we pray for. We pray for everyone that comes along in our area that we can do. And we bless our enemies. The Bible says you'll heap coals upon their heads when you do that, meaning you'll cause them to shame when you actually bless your enemies. And you're sharing our joys and our sorrows. The Bible didn't say that you weren't going to have sorrows, and we do. We know there's losses that we encounter, there's hurt that we encounter. And we need to share that, but we also need to share our joys. But even in sharing our sorrows, we still have to share them with the whole design purpose of even stating that we know we're sad now, but just like the word of God says, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So we know that we may be hurting now, but we know God's got something good and blessing in store for us. We have to be humble in our relations with others. Humility is something that is so important that we use as children of God. And being humble does not make you weak. It makes you able to know who is in charge. It ain't us, it's God. And how we respond to evil, do not repay with evil, be mindful of what is good. Uh, and if possible, we need to be at peace with everyone. That's what the Bible says, be at peace with all men. If possible. Now, <laughs> there are some people it's hard to be peaceful with. And those are people when you when you find it hard to be at peace with someone, then that's when you need to learn how to exit yourself from their sphere of influence. Don't do it with a, a huff and a gruff and walking out. You know, you excuse yourself and then you Pray for them. You know, the peace needs to come from you. You don't expect peace from everyone else. But you need to be at peace with everyone, even if they're not at peace with you, as much as possible. And don't use that as much as possible as an excuse to not be at peace. Well, you know, the Bible says if, if it's possible, it just is not possible. Well, have you really tried to truly be at peace? Do you know what it means to be at peace? If you don't know, you need to look it up. Give place to the wrath of God, meaning you don't, you don't worry about how somebody else is going to get repaid for what they do. God's going to take care of all that. You let him be the judge. You let him be 
the jury. You let him be the executioner of the judgment. It's not for us to do that. We're not to be the ones that, you know, meet out justice to someone. We give place to that to God. And we overcome evil by responding with good. So any questions about what we went over last week in chapter 12? All right. So let's go on to chapter 13, objectives in studying this chapter. Continuing his instructions concerning the transformed life, Paul now discusses the Christian's responsibility to governmental authorities. This is a big one for this week. Understanding that all governments are in power due to the providence of God, and that they serve as ministers of God to avenge the evildoer. Christians are admonished to submit to the powers that be, verses 1 through 5. This submission, oh, what did I do? I'm, so, I'm sorry. Well, go back. I don't know what I just did. Uh, this submission involves payment of taxes and having respect for those in authority. Paul's next exhortation deals with the importance of love and moral purity. Christians are to be indebted to no one, save to love one another. When love is properly demonstrated, even the requirements of the law are adequately met. This admonition to love, however, is balanced with the reminder that time is short and that it is imperative that Christians maintain moral purity. This is done by Christians putting on the Lord Jesus and not making provision for the fulfilling of the lust of the flesh. It's going to be verses 11 through 14. The points we're going to ponder in today's session is our duties towards the government and the importance of love and moral purity. So I'm sure there's going to be things that we're going to talk about dealing with the government but we have to put it in a perspective to how God wants us to respond. Responsibilities of the government, this is Romans 13, verses 1 through 7. New King James, it says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, custom to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Okay. This is uh, New Living. A, B in subjection, verses one through five. Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants, 
sent for you for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid. For they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. A, for governing authorities are appointed by God. Um, <laughs> this, this, I, I know I got some questions on this one. Um, the word of God says it. So I have to stand by it. God puts in place who he wants to put in place. We don't always understand why it is, but God has a reason and a purpose that he allows certain people to be in governmental positions that we don't like, that we don't believe in, that we don't um, agree with. But we are not to do things that cause an evil intent on our part. Um, let me keep going because I, I got an example, but I want to I want to go a little further. For governing authorities are God's ministers to avenge evil, to avoid wrath, and maintain good conscience. Let me go back. Okay. Um, there are laws being put into place that we as God's people do not agree with. And you have a moral sense and a Christian duty to stand for the word of God. Now, you cannot do something that is going to cause hurt, harm, and danger by your stance. One of the things that has become so crazy is um, when people were bombing abortion centers, people that were shooting down and killing abortion doctors in the name of Christ. That's not Christ. We don't do that. There is a clinic right here on Main Street just before James Road. It's a Planned Parenthood on one side of the street, on the other side of the street. We believe that's where the actual abortions are done. But every day, all through the winter, I don't care how bad it's been, I don't care how hot it is, every day, there are people that stand out front and pray. And they'll be there all day. They take turns, their shifts, and they pray. They don't go onto the property. They're on the sidewalk, which is the city's property. But they don't go onto the property because that's illegal. Now, you can protest. There's things you can do. There's things, the ways that you can do it without showing... Um, The Bible says, don't let your good be evil spoken of. And the things that you do that are good. Um, I just saw in the news today that there was a um, a uh, group that helps children. And they had uh, the, um, not the trans, but the, oh, uh, what is it? What's it called? What do you know what I'm talking about? Um, drag. They had a drag uh, uh, meeting there. Out the, also outside, they were raising money for this children's society. Their goal was to raise $5,000. Okay? 
Well, when they had the rally, these Nazis were across the street and they protested this drag um, gathering. They had on these red shirts and black hoods and glasses and they were doing the Sikh Heil, Sikh Heil, Sikh Heil. And they thought that they were going to break this drag thing up and they didn't. Matter of fact, the, the people that they were doing this for, they had a goal of 5,000. So far, they've raised almost 500,000. People have been sending in money from all over the country. What they thought they were going to break up actually caused more money to be poured into this organization. Not to drag people, but the organization that they were doing it for. Now, I don't agree with it. I you know, I mean, organization, you want to utilize them to help you. That's not God. There's many other ways that, that, that you can be helped. But this was done. And these Nazis, you know, I mean, they it was it was it was they didn't they didn't do anything. They didn't. They were just there in force. But it's who they represented and how they represented themselves that caused more people to become more on the side of this children's organization who allowed these drags to put on a performance to help raise money. See how the enemy will do you? It's for a good purpose, but look how he slipped his thing in. And the Nazis doing what they did just fueled more people to go on the side of the good than the side of the evil or what they thought was good as opposed to the evil. It's crazy. But we have to make a stand in certain things that we do. I have a 501c3. We have that for our church. I will not marry same-sex marriages. I won't do it. Now, if you want to take me to court, and the only thing you can do is take away my 501c3. Take it away. That don't mean nothing. Tell me I can't perform marriages. That's uh, You know how many marriages I perform a year? I haven't done one in, what, a couple of years? That's one small thing I do. You can't stop me from preaching the gospel. But it's the law. Well, so it's the law. It's a law for them to get married. It's not a law that I have to do the marriage. So, you know, it's, 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 when we're even looking at these things, we have to be very careful of our stance and what we do and how we do it. We still have to, to, um, be, aware of the governing authorities, and we have to obey. But if it comes down to us obeying them or obeying God, then you got to look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You got to look at Daniel. We have to pay a price for it. But is God, are we believing God? And at the end, when we stand up for God, we're going to come out on top anyway. But you just have to know about that. Fulfill what is due. Pay your taxes, too, for this same reasons. For government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them. And give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Jesus paid his taxes. What do you mean? Oh, Jesus told Peter, go down to the river. First fish you catch is going to have the amount of money in his mouth for our taxes and then go pay him. He didn't agree with what was going on, but he had to be subject to the governmental authorities. So Jesus had to pay his, you got to pay yours, I got to pay mine too. 
taxes and customs, fear, respect, and honor. We have to honor those who are in authority, whether you believe in them or not. I'm not a bit, I'm not a fan at all of um, our presidential body. I'll put it that way. But I haven't been a great fan of too many of them anyway. Because I have not seen not a one of them who really stands up for the belief that I believe in fully. And I cannot say that there are those who have not used the Bible and God to get what they want for themselves. But if God put them in authority, that's who they are. They're there. We have to respect them and honor them. Plus, we're supposed to be praying for them. There are a lot of people that did not like President Barack Obama at all. And I mean, there's a lot of them that let me and Michelle know. And one of the first things I asked them was, are you praying for him? Well, I, 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 nothing. You don't like him? Pray for him. They don't like uh, uh, Trump. Oh, Trump said, are you pray? Did you pray for him? Did you pray God's blessing upon him? Did you ask God to bless him? The same way with Joe Biden. Are you praying for him? You know there's a problem there. But are you praying for him? Are you praying for his health? Are you praying for his strength? Are you praying for his blessing? Are you praying for his salvation? If you're not, you ain't got a leg to stand on. Because you're not doing what God wants you to do. Any questions? Any comments? And I know y'all got something, but y'all just don't want to say it. But it's okay. I say it for you. It's tough to obey certain things that you know are wrong. And I'm not telling you to obey them. I'm telling you that when you disobey them or when you don't do what they tell you to do, you better have a good reason to do it. It better be steeped in the word of God. And you better be ready for the consequences that come with you disobeying that. Other than that, you do what the law tells you to do. All right, two. Exhortation to love and moral purity. Romans 13, 8 through 14. It says, no, O man, anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk purposely as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Very forthright, very true. So A, the value of love, verses 8 through 10. Owe oh, nothing to anyone except your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These 
and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills requirements of God's law. A lot of us know somebody who, who it's hard to love. But this is what it's telling you. You have a commandment, one commandment that fulfills all the ones that you just can't keep. There's 10 that he gave you. You ain't gonna do you, you ain't gonna keep them. But of these ones here, there's just one commandment that covers it all. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, no one anything but love. Don't leave accounts unsettled. Know that irregardless to how things may have ended or how things are going even right now, don't owe an apology to somebody and you ain't given. it. Don't owe a, a, a visit to somebody and you ain't done it. You know, do do what you know is right. Keep short accounts. Don't owe people anything, but just to love. I'm not talking about money. Especially, well, especially money too. If you done borrowed some money from somebody, you should better pay it back. And don't, don't talk about, well, you know, I just forgot you and you. Every, anybody you never borrowed money from, you know you done borrowed money from them. And it was a borrow, not a gift, unless they told you, hey, you don't have to worry about paying it back. You owe it, you pay it. For love does no harm and fulfills the law. Concerning moral purity, verses 11 through 14. Does anybody, before I go any further, anybody got anything to say about Owing anybody or loving. Okay. Concerning more purity, verses 11 through 14, and it ends it up. This is all the more urgent for you to know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is among, is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day. We must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, close yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Time is short. You need to cast off works of darkness, put on the armor of light. Um, time is short. We're not talking about the rapture. We're talking about our time on earth period is short in comparison to eternity. I buried three of my cousins last year in the same year, brothers. Boom, boom, boom. The last one was just in the hospital with a hemorrhagic stroke. I went and saw him. He's much better. He is due to get out uh, of the rehab center this Friday, hopefully. But I mean, he's the last. He's the last brother. There was there was five five sons, five males, four gone, and none of them were older than me. All younger than me. But gone. Little eleven-year-old girl died this morning in a car accident. Eleven years old. 
Time is short. We ain't got time to mess around. We can't afford to be living in darkness. We have to live in light. And he, this is what this is what I like about this. It's telling us we have to cast it off. We can't, oh Lord, take it away, Lord, take it away. No, you need to get rid of it. And then put on this light. I have to do the same thing. We all have to. Walk properly by putting on Jesus, making no provision to fulfill fleshly lusts. Our flesh cries out for the lustful things of the world. Cries out. Some things we don't see it as lust, but it is. It's not love. It's not for our good. We have to walk properly. We got to know who we serve and who helps us in every way to overcome evil and to walk in good. We can't give place to the devil, but allow God to rise up in us through his Holy Spirit and be strong and courageous to fight and win the battle. Any questions on morality? What I like about this Romans is Paul is so straightforward with what he's saying of how we are to live. These last few chapters are all about how we are to live, what we are to do, how we are to act according to what God wants for us, plain and simple. And we got to do it. All right. Some words to ponder that we dealt with in this, this chapter. Governing authorities, political powers which govern our society. Those are the governing authorities. Uh, does not bear the sword in vain or an implied reference to the use of capital punishment. Um, there are debating right now about the death penalty. Uh, the problem with the death penalty is it's never been meted out um, equally. Some say it's not a deterrent. Well, I don't know. I, I believe if it's really met out the way it should be, uh, you know you have done something that deserves death, you're supposed to get death. And they drag it out for years. And some of these countries, when you get the death sentence, you got 24 hours. <laughs> and you gone. But we don't do it right. We've got some of the wrong ones on death row that don't belong there. We've got some that belong there that ain't there. And it's just not right. But it implies reference to the use of capital punishment. Uh, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, a process begun in baptism. Find us in the Galatians 3 and 27, and it's continued as we develop Christ-like qualities found in Colossians, third chapter, verses 9 through 17. You need to read these on your own. Revelry. Drinking parties involving unrestrained indulgence in alcoholic beverages and accompanying immoral behavior e.g. binge parties and raves. So we're not talking about you taking a glass of wine or, you know, drinking a beer. We're talking about, you know, having these wild parties or going, even going to the wild parties where everybody's inhibitions is just cast off and you just do anything because you're so drunk, you don't know what's happening. I've been to them before when I was in the streets. But you're now saved. That's to not be a part of your lifestyle. A lewdness to engage in immoral sexual excess, sexual immorality, lasciviousness. Speaks rather for itself. 
and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Means to avoid situations where unlawful fleshly desires might be aroused and acted upon. The things you ain't supposed to do. The places you ain't supposed to go. With the people you ain't supposed to be with. All right, so let's review some questions and then I'll let you guys go. Uh, the main points of this chapter, does anybody remember what they are? Um, that the government is put into place by God. Those yep, in authority yep, are up under God. Responsibilities to the government and the exhortations to love and moral purity. Those are the two main points that we dealt with in this chapter. Thank you, Heather. Uh, what one word summarizes a Christian's responsibility to the government? Obey. <laughs> submit. Obey. Submit. Yes. We are to submit. And then, <laughs> there is so much controversy in this, and I understand that. Trust me. But I ain't put it in the Word of God. The word It's in the Word of God. He's telling you to do it. Now, not the immoral stuff, but the things that are general... That should go for everyone. Pay your taxes. Adhere to the laws. Driving. Doing right. Public decency. All the things we're supposed to do that's in the laws that are set up for our good. That's what we are to do. Uh, from where do governments get their authority? God. God. Amen. What happens if we resist governing authorities? Mm. Oh, We're resisting God. We Not resist God, yes. And bring judgment upon ourselves. That is so true. Uh, what is the major responsibility of governments? People. Maintain law and order. Maintain law and order. I like that. To avenge the evildoer. Yeah. Maintain law and order and avenge the evildoer. Those that we know are not doing right, the re major responsibility of the government is to take care of them. Handle them. <laughs> Put them in jail if they need to be put in jail. Ban them. Take away their privileges. Do whatever is necessary according to the law. That's the responsibility of the government. Not responsibility for us, but for the government. Uh, what, should, what should serve as motivation for Christians? Submission to the government. Wrath and consequence. Yeah. We don't want wrath and we sure don't want the consequence. But if you have to deal with the consequence, well, that's just it. If you're going to disobey, you have to deal with the consequences. Like I said, I know even me. If I had a printing company at one time, so I had a printing company. We did flyers. We did business cards. We did all this stuff. And I had... Uh, a woman who ran a beauty parlor that was right next to, or a hairdresser, I don't know what you call me these days, whatever, it was right next to the barbershop I used to go to. And she's gay. And they're having this big gay party. And she wanted me to print up these flyers. And I didn't want to do it. I did not want to do it. And I went to my pastor at the time and I told him, you know, this woman is wanting me to do this service for her and print up these flyers for this gay party she wants to have, but I don't want to do it. You know what he told me? He said, you, when you went into business, you went into business to do this. 
to say you didn't you didn't put no stipulations on it. He's like, you want to get out of it? He said, give her a charge so high that she will that she'll go look for somebody else. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I went, boy, that made a lot of sense. <laughs> I couldn't deny her. And she asked why. I got to tell her why, because I still got to be truthful. But I gave her a quote <laughs> that she said, oh, no, it's okay. And she went somewhere else. I was off the hook for that. But see, you got to know what you're doing. If you're going to stand, you know, just like the, 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 the people that were sued, uh, the bakers that didn't want to make the cake for the same-sex wedding or whatever, and they got sued, they got shut down. Well, hey, you know, they got, sued, they got shut down. They stood their ground. But I believe God's blessings on them was far better than had they have crumbled and did according to what the world would want them to do as opposed to what God wanted them to do. The lady, when, 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 um, when same-sex marriage became legal, I think it was a woman, I, I don't know if it was Kentucky or West Virginia, I, can't, I know it was one of these southern states, she was um, the um, person that gave out the license. Yeah, was, the clerk of courts yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, she refused to give them the license. And they fired her. Well, hey, you got fired. Your job was to give out licenses to whomever you asked you for a license. Your, your, your stance is now the law. So you had to do one of two things. Either you're going to obey the law and break your morals and Christian stance, or you're going to stand up for Christ and pay the consequences. She stood up for Christ and paid the consequences. Well, that's mm -hmm. fine. That's not the only job that's in town. You can go find something else. Amen. But you have to be able to do the things that you know, if it's going to come with a consequence, let the consequence come. God will make a better way. I'm a believer in that. What else is required of Christians in regards to government? Mm. Pay your taxes. Respect for those in authority. You don't bad mouth the president. You don't bad mouth the governor. Governor, you don't bad mouth the mayor. You don't bad mouth anybody. You pray for them. That's the honor that you and respect that you give them is taking the time to pray for them. People are laughing at Joe Biden right now. Oh, he got dementia. Oh, really? That's not something funny. If he's got dementia, my God. What about you? What happens if you got dementia? You're doomed. You know, pray for the man. You ain't supposed to be laughing at him because he might may stumble or whatever. He miss, but that, but it's not for us to, to, to laugh at that. We have to respect that and pray for that person. That's what the word of God is telling us to do. If you don't do it, what's it say? The number four, we resist God and bring judgment upon ourselves. What one thing should we ought what what one thing should we owe to others? Love. Love. Number nine. What are we to put on? What are we not to provide opportunities for? We're to put on Christ and not allow sin in. Beautiful. The armor of light, the Lord Jesus Christ. There you go. Good, Victor. Wonderful. The fulfillment of fleshly lusts. We don't allow that to come into our lives. And number 10, what is contrary to walking properly as Christians? Revelry and drunkenness. Lewdness and lust. That is not the Christian way. And strife and envy. 
These are not the things that if you call yourself a Christian that you indulge in. All right, so our next lesson is going to be Romans chapter 14.